To celebrate who is now one of my favorite witchers in the Witcher universe, we're going to be making the honey cake. Mm. This is also a super easy recipe, so feel free to modify this however you want and put whatever toppings you want on it. But today, I'm going to be making a basic honey cake from the Witcher Nightmare of a Wolf. But first, a message from Paul the Cook. I'm also doing a limited release merch drop, and I'll let you guys know more at the end. Now, to start things off, we're going to take 250 grams with the room temperature. What are you doing right now? Why are you, why are you messing with the cutting board? Just get the butter into the bowl. 250 grams with the room temperature butter, followed by 40 grams of granulated sugar. Why do you look at the camera like this? Now, grab a whisk and realize that the whisk isn't really working at this point, so then grab a spatula and start bringing the butter and the sugar together. Alternatively, you can just use a cake mixer, but I decided I wanted to make this by hand just because I haven't done it in a while. And after vigorously whisking for about two to three minutes, you should have a nice soft Really? Come on now, how does that even happen? Now make sure you remove as much of that butter and sugar off of the whisk and make sure it is nice and smooth. I actually haven't made a cake by hand in a very long time. Yeah, dude, we can totally tell. Now place your bowl on a scale and grab your honey of choice. I'm using a nice wildflower honey, but a buckwheat honey is far more traditional and packs a bigger punch. Measure out 110 grams worth of honey and then fully incorporate the honey into that butter and the sugar, making sure it is super smooth. If you're using a stand mixer like I should have been using, this doesn't take very long. Now once you've creamed everything together, this is when we're going to take 235 grams worth of all-purpose flour, followed by two grams worth of salt and three grams worth of baking powder. Now take a third of that mixture and place it into your sieve. This is going to help give it a nice smooth texture, but we only want to use a third to start. After adding in that first third of dry ingredients, make sure it is fully incorporated and fully combined. Now using this method also doesn't allow you to build up too much gluten, which is really nice to give you a nice crumbly cake. Once you have everything fully combined, this is when we're going to start adding in our liquids. Now we're going to start off with one whole egg, followed by by half of your total amount of milk. We need a total of 125 milliliters worth of milk, so just place half of that roughly into that bowl. Make sure this is fully combined, and uh, this is a lot easier in a stand mixer, I will admit, but just make sure it's nice and smooth. Oh, my whisk broke. No. I've had this whisk since culinary school. Now, once you've fully accepted the pain, add another third of your dry ingredients directly on top of your batter. Mix this together and repeat this process. You want to make sure it comes out nice and smooth and fully incorporated each and every time you do this. Once the dry is now incorporated, add your second egg, bring that together, and yes, it does look like it's coming apart. Then add the rest of your milk, making sure that that is fully incorporated as well, and just pay attention to this because if you go too hard, it's going to splash. And then add in the final amount of your dry ingredients. We want it to end with the dry ingredients so it is nice and easy to mix and so that flour doesn't get overworked. Once you have everything nice and smooth, add in your obligatory cap worth of vanilla, fold that vanilla into your batter, and your honey cake batter is good to go. This doesn't take too long at all. And really, bro, you're going to wash your hands? That's good cake. That's good cake. Now do a little flip de doo with your eight inch round pan. And we gotta get ready to line this thing. Just give it a nice spray with some nonstick spray to help this parchment paper stay in place. I've used this trick before and it does really help. Once the parchment paper is in place, grab a knife and cut off any excess paper just so it's out of the way and you don't have to deal with it. Now spray it one more time very gently and then grab some of your all-purpose flour dusting the bottom of the pan. You don't need to go too heavy on this because what you really wanna do is knock around that flour to fully cover the bottom and some of the sides of the cake pan. This is also going to help release the cake later and I would recommend doing this and then just dumping out any excess flour that you have. Now, once that's ready to go, we can start adding all of our batter directly into the pan. Now, since this is a thicker batter, you do want to make sure you level this out. It won't level by itself. Using your spatula, just poke the sides down a bit, making sure that the top is as smooth as possible. Give it some of these tampings, feeling like it does anything, and then let it rest for about 15 minutes. Now, we're back after 15 minutes and we're ready to place this in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for around 35 minutes. This is me putting it into the oven. Do it. Why? 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 Why do you do these things? Why do you do these things? Oh, I don't even have the lights on or anything. Come on, Paul. I feel like Tony Stark right now. Bam, lights. Thanks, Elgato. Thank you, Elgato, for providing light. Now, after 35 minutes and pulling the cake out, give it the good old toothpick test to make sure it comes out clean and then let it rest in the cake pan for about 10 to 15 minutes. After those 10 to 15 minutes, we're ready to pull the cake out and let it rest completely until it's cooled down. Give this a good old flip and place this onto your wire rack to cool down completely. Make sure you leave that parchment paper on though. Look, it's so cute. It's so easy to make. I'm so happy that you're happy. Now for the topping, I'm using a really nice raw honey, but feel free to also make a really nice honey glaze if you want. In this case, since we're using the raw honey and we do need to thin it out so we can spread it all over this beautiful cake, we're going to take 50 grams worth of honey and add just a splash of hot water to it. You want to start off with a very small amount of water because you want this to be more of a syrup-like consistency. If you add in too much water, it's just going to be too wet and then you have to add more honey and then you're just going to have a bunch of honey syrup, which you could drink, I guess, if you really wanted to. Now, once you have your honey syrup ready to go, add half of your honey 
syrup directly on top of that cake using the back of the spoon to spread it out as evenly as possible. Now wait 15 to 20 minutes before we add the second half. Now the reason why we added the first half with the parchment is so some of it could soak up the honey on the bottom. The parchment helps facilitate that. But for the second half, we don't want too much more on the bottom. So place this back on your wire rack and add that second half of your glaze. Remember, the better the honey, the better this is going to taste. He's not wrong on that. The better the honey, the better the cake is going to taste. Now we're going to let this rest for another 20 minutes or so before we cut into it, just so that way the honey has time to penetrate that top layer. Remove this from your rack, place it onto your plate of choice, and there it is, the beautiful honey cake from Nightmare of a Wolf. We obviously have to cut a piece out and then enjoy it, right? I don't have a cake knife, so I'm using this Babish cleaver that I bought. Now with the Babish cleft knife in hand, cut your cake into really however many pieces you want. I'm cutting mine into a total of eight pieces. Well, I guess two for the video. Remove whatever this was from this piece of cake and there it is, the beautiful honey cake from A Nightmare of the Wolf. This didn't take too long to make. I'm really happy with how everything looks and the way it came out, so cheers. Oh baby. Cake is nice and moist. It tastes of honey. It has this really subtle sweetness that I absolutely love. This is delicious, but not as delicious as this drop that we have at chefpk.com. For those of you who couldn't join us on the Kickstarter, I'm opening up the secret shop down below, and you're gonna be able to pick up any limited edition merch for the Kickstarter. We have pins and headbands, and you can even order some of the books ahead of time to go out when all the other Kickstarter rewards go out as well. Those will take some time to get to everyone, but I would love for you guys to take part in this, and it's only available until tomorrow morning at 5 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 24 hours from the release of this video. So make sure you check that that out and check out this other video I did from The Witcher where I made a lamb and barley dish. My name is Chef PK and remember, keep playing with your food.